The crisis in the NDDC takes a new turn as Nunez's home is besieged and Pandey's arrest ordered. And the Senate moves to review the age limit of job seekers. This is PLOS Politics and I am Felicity Isiwike. Thank you for joining us. Now, the crisis rocking the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, continues as about 20 armed police officers reportedly surrounded the home of the former interim managing director of the commission, Joy Nunye. She was, however, driven to the River State Government House by the state governor, Yesam Wike, when he visited her home. However, that's not all, as the Nigeria's House of Representatives has ordered the arrest and probe of the acting managing director of the NDDC, Daniel Ponde, for what it termed as contempt of the legislature. We're joined to discuss this by Evans Ufeli, legal practitioner, and of course we have Ganiyu Balogu, public affairs analyst, both to join us via Zoom. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Well, it's a pleasure. Pleasure to have you as well. Now, let me start with you, um, Mr. Ufeli. A lot has happened today from the siege at the house of the ex-MD, uh, Nunye, uh, to the NDDC management walking out on reps member and the subsequent order for arrest. Uh, there's, of course, the um, arrest warrant that's been issued. Everything seems to be happening all at once. How are you making sense of all of these? Well, starting from the siege of the house of the former MD, uh, Joy Nune, um, it, it is not very clear exactly what the policemen who siege her house at around 4 a.m. this morning, what they really uh, went there for. Because um, from the reports that we have gotten and from the information uh, at our disposal, uh, it was confirmed that uh, the Commissioner of Police of that state was not aware of that, um, that um, uh, attempt to arrest. Okay, normally uh, there should be a collaboration in the police force. That's why you have a hierarchy where the federal, uh, uh, where the police is coming to raid or arrest someone in a state. Usually the CP of that state is usually informed. Okay, and then there will be some collaboration within, between the, the policemen coming from Abuja and then the policemen resident uh, in the state. But uh, such co short um, cohesion did not happen in this case. And so she reached out to the governor who came to her rescue. Now, the, the, the clear uh, position right now is that those policemen will need to be interviewed or they will need to make presentation as regards um, on whose order and on whose command they came to her premises to either arrest her or to siege up the place. Because not still very clear on that issue. She was supposed to catch a, a first flight to Abuja for the um, uh, National Assembly Ad Hoc Committee. Okay, this morning, um, the uh, process and the investigation into the matter with the National Assembly uh, Committee on the Niger Delta is looking into, okay? Um, but right now, um, that she could not attend that uh, event this morning. And then we also heard of the fracas that uh, uh, fell out from the event proper, where there was a walkout and then um, uh, certain recommendations and others were made accordingly. I think that uh, the crisis in the uh, commission is one that requires urgent attention. Uh, it's one that requires that um, the president must make the necessary orders, which I believe has been made because I read uh, a press statement from the state house where the president is giving a marching order to the effect that um, that particular uh, incident or the, the problem and the crisis rocking the you know, commission must be arrested uh, timelessly, and then the perpetrators of corruption, of uh, different kind of um, uh, problems that are being created in that place, should be arrested 
and then charge accordingly. All right. Because this is a commission. No, finish your thoughts quickly. Yeah, because this is a commission that um, is intended to bring development to that region of the country. But it appears that the actors or the leaders of that commission have turned the whole thing uh, around. And then it's giving government a lot of concern. There's no development whatsoever in the place. There's a whole lot of corruption in the uh, uh, NDDC. And uh, I think that um, the president, like I said earlier, must address the issue. Yeah, we, we will um, hopefully get to the point where we'll extray that statement and the import it is uh, supposed to have um, on the situation. But for now, I want to ask you um, your thoughts. There are comments circulating all over uh, social media suggesting that the, uh, the siege at uh, Nunez's home um, might be because her accusations are not are more than accusations, that there is some substance to her accusation, and that is why she was being um, uh, stopped from giving more evidence. Uh, Mr. Ufeli, the question is for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Uh... Go ahead. Um, the question is for you. I'm still staying with you. Uh, we're having a little bit of an issue okay. with uh, Mr. Kennedy's connection. Okay, yes. The, the... It's, it's natural for, for people to reach such kind of conclusion because the lady seems to be very vibrant and convinced in her position that the commission, the, the, the minister, okay, of Niger Data Affairs have um, a lot of questions to answer. And if you remember the last sitting, she made some very weighty allegations. And then these allegations have not been addressed so far, have not been countered by the minister. The minister uh, actually left uh, the allegations and went into other extraneous issues that, that were personal and that has to do with the credentials of uh, the, the former MD. Uh, yes, so, uh, uh, let, me, let me interject here and ask that, um, wouldn't it have been a good opportunity for the NDDC team, in spite, we'll come to the accusation later, in spite of the accusation, as an opportunity for them to present to Nigerians, since the public, the hearing is public, um, some of the evidence that they have to clear their names, as well as um, indict the um, committee chairman, um, if they so wish. Well, it, it, would have, it would have been an opportunity, but you know that... Uh, there are certain persons who do not want that woman to get to that um, a meeting. Okay, if you remember the last time they had the meeting, while she was addressing the press, some persons came out to disrupt her from giving further information to the public. If you watch that video very well. So um, this, these persons may not be unconnected to what is going on now, okay? Because um, we, we, we see that this woman have a lot of information. And then this information, they, they, they appear to be very direct and specific to persons. Because she was mentioning names. She was mentioning facts. She was stating issues in a way that is very persuasive and convincing. And then she was disrupted. On that particular day, she was addressing the press. Now, she's supposed to catch a flight to the same adult committee of the National Assembly to give further facts, to present further documents, and to make further proclamation. And all of a sudden, the police seized her premises. So one will begin to ask whether the police is working in concert with those persons who do not want her to give further revelation on what has happened in that commission. That is one of the questions we have to, we, 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 must, that must be raised, okay, by virtue of suspicion, by virtue of the fact that this woman is giving a lot of information out. Who are the persons who are really obstructing the course of justice, the course All of right. her revelation? And these persons, they may not be unconnected with this police act of seizing her premises because um, it, it shows that... Um, uh, uh, they want her to conceal information. They want Mr. her to Feli, conceal let's evidence. Bring in, um, uh, let's uh, bring in Mr. Coyote now and get his thought on the uh, developments. Uh, Mr. Coyote, are you with us? I'm with you. 
All right. Um, I don't know if you've been able to follow so far uh, the contributions from Mr. Ufeli, but I, I just want to move the conversation further by um, asking um, of what impact would the corruption allegation against the committee chairman that uh, Olubumi Tunjojo have on the proceedings? I mean, uh, some have argued that if the hearing is done publicly, he would lose the power to influence proceedings and that by walking out, the NDDC had given him more weapon to use against them. What do you say? Well, you are quite correct. But the first thing they need to do is to make sure that the NDDC people go back to the house and make their case. Under the law, they have no right to walk out on the assembly. They are only giving more ammunition to the person they are accusing of doing whatever they said he or she is doing. What they need to do now is go back and make their case in the house. Then call a press conference and tell them that they don't think they can get fairness from that committee based on the accusations that they've leveled against the chairman of the committee. Okay, uh, I'm a quickly, let me go back to Mr. Ofeli and just get a clarification. The issue of content of legislature, uh, what does that mean, really? Um, a lot of persons would say that seemed to be a new uh, term. Is there something like that? Could you explain to us? Well, uh, walking out from a panel, okay, um, that is legally constituted for the purposes of carrying out constitutional functions and responsibility. You know that Section 88, Section 89 gives the National Assembly that power of oversight function, and it is statutory. It is known to law. It is an established fact of law. So anyone that is someone before any panel or any committee of the National Assembly is supposed to conduct himself in such a way that will reflect the, the, the dignity of the office and the respect of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Because everyone is supposed to respect the, federal, uh, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So working out from the National Assembly can amount to contempt. Okay. Well, there may not be any specific law, okay, uh, that just like in court proceedings, of course, there are certain attitudes that you display in the courtroom. You can be committed uh, to prison, and then you can go through contempt and then be tried, and then you show cause why this disciplinary action should not be taken against you. But that of the National Assembly, it stems from the fact that the Constitution is supreme and this provision shall have a binding force on all persons and authority throughout the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So if the Constitution have, you know, instituted uh, a committee, a panel that is answerable to the Constitution and that have taken oath to defend the Constitution, every citizen or everyone in every commission or ministry, you know, the Constitution says that um, uh, all authorities and persons, okay? Okay, so... Um, it is contempt to walk out right. from such panel, and uh, then there should be consequences to that effect. Okay, uh, that, because that clarification one would have uh, thought was that. needed, uh, so we can actually uh, know. Um, I mean, it's one thing for it to have legal backing; it's another thing for it to be implemented. Uh, we'll get to that in a bit, but let's go back to Mr. Kayode. Um, not to belabor the issue, but. Isn't the honest of proof on the accuser from information the NDDC has made available on the matter? Do they have enough evidence to prove their case um, against the chairman of the committee? Because that's one of the reasons they gave for not um, 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 explaining themselves. Uh, what they are supposed to do mainly was to write a petition to the ethics committee of the House. It is the ethics committee that can take up this case independent of whatever they are doing now. Like the man said, there is no way they can work out on the National Assembly and there will not be consequences. Because their budget will still have to pass through this committee before going through to the General House. So the consequences may be a little bit further down the line, but there surely will be consequences. So what they need to do in this case is move to the Court of Public Opinion and then write a petition through the Speaker we will now take it to the Ethics Committee to investigate this particular allegation. Okay, so what do you say to comments now that the NDDC is trying to deflate or distract from accusations against them? Uh, that is not, that's not unexpected. 
is part of our way to divert attention from serious allegations. And I expect the members of the committee to be above such pettiness by ensuring that what they needed to hear were, were told to them in the chambers. You cannot continue to pretend that everything is fine with NDDC. And this is the best uh, platform for the management of NDDC to make their case to the general public on one hand and to the representative of the people on the other. By working out, they are telling the people that they don't think they'll get fair judgment when they've never made a case in the first place. Okay, uh, I'm going to ask you, um, at the center of all of these controversies is the commission itself. Uh, both houses of the National Assembly have uncovered a um, series of financial infractions um, against uh, the management team, uh, ranging from non-performing contracts uh, to pain of contractors who haven't actually uh, delivered on um, on on um, their mandates, the the description of job that was given to them. What do we well, do? Because the focus of the conversation seemed to have shifted from all of this to the shenanigans of somebody being uh, called out for contempt, somebody's home being besieged, uh, sexual harassment, accusation, and all of that. It's a, it's a, it's a small dive. Okay. Are you, I, 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 am I the one talking? Yes, yes, I'm with you, uh, Mr. Kayane. Go ahead. Uh, it's, a, it's a very small diversion. It's not really that important. In the next 24 to 48 hours, they will have to come back and make a case. They can't keep diverting their attention forever. I don't think we should belabor that point. It's not really that important. They will provide us with entertainment for a couple of days, but ultimately they still have to come back and give us the results of their stewardship. All right, Mr. Kayode, are you still with us? I'm with you. Okay, um, I'll, I'll ask you this before I go back to Mr. Ofeli. Uh, President Muhammad Buhari has reacted by a statement uh, by Garba Shew. Uh, uh, Mr. Ofeli also alluded to that earlier, urging for better coordination between investigating agencies and the National Assembly, while urging timely sharing of information as well. He expressed determination to get to the root of the problem undermining development in the Niger Delta. Of what import is his statement now? Because a lot of persons are saying he took too long to uh, present this and react. And is that reaction strong enough in your thinking? Well, the reaction is ideal for the moment. Like I said, we don't have the final report yet. They've not even been given a chance to defend themselves. So it's when after all said and done that we can now come to the conclusion whether both the executive and the legislature are going to cooperate in sharing information that will be useful to everybody in the country. All right, uh, Mr. Ofeli, uh, let me uh, come to you. Your thought on that as well. Is that statement by the president, you alluded to it earlier, is it strong enough to address the situation and maybe refocus uh, the conversation on the issues of corruption and the welfare of the Niger Delta people? Well, the, the president just lend uh, his voice to the issue at hand uh, because he has been silent uh, all the while. And uh, what he said uh, is not really um, weighty enough uh, in, on the issue because he's only calling, making a persuasive statement, calling for proper coordination uh, in the investigation, calling on the authorities. I mean, uh, there is already the National Committee, the, the National Assembly uh, Ad Hoc Committee investigating the matter uh, already. So the president's comment is at best uh, to encourage them to. Uh, hasting up and then uh, do a thorough job, okay? But I would have expected a situation where since the allegations and counter-allegations being leveled against uh, the uh, both the minister and then the uh, uh, NDDC uh, boss, the former boss, the current boss and all that, I would have expected that since it's uh, uh, economic crime, uh, it's financial crime, it's economic crime, that the uh, um, um, EFCC would have been um, ordered to investigate the matter proper. And then since the EFCC have, have uh, the powers to investigate, to prosecute 
and then to do a lot of things to make recommendation for and all that. Um, um, the, even as the National Assembly is uh, taking the matter and then um, investigating it and all that, when they are done with that, they cannot prosecute, they can only make recommendations. And upon the recommendations, uh, the other uh, institution will take over. So one would have thought that um, the uh, uh, ESCC would have been allowed to do that investigation and come up with their findings. And if uh, it is weighty enough to commence prosecution against um, the culprits, and then that can be done straight and immediately. But right now, what we have is the National Assembly on board. Uh, and since they are already there, it is better to allow them to finish up whatever they are doing um, to make sure that they compel the uh, NDDC um, um, uh, men who walked out of the place, to compel them to return to that because it is self-help to walk out from a consulted authority that is sanctioned by the Constitutional Federal Republic of Nigeria. Okay, J just to throw this one in, uh, do you see that forensic audit seeing the light of day? Because there seemed to be a whole lot of skepticism uh, about that report uh, coming out and being made public. Well, uh, if, the, if the forensic um, audit is uh, conducted by a credible um, uh, accounting firm, okay, and then independent of interests and um, settlements, okay, and not influenced by either parties, then we can't say that we'll come up with something very credible that we throw light. Um, and then that we um, extinguish all iota of doubt as regards uh, who did what, when and how in the past and in the present and all that. There will be a clear cut direction on how to really uh, go about the investigation and do the prosecution if there's any need, if the need arises. Okay. So I think uh, uh, the uh, forensic audit is critical. And then why it is a pointer to the truth, okay? The general investigation also from the uh, National Assembly, uh, the NDDC uh, men must give the National Assembly a benefit of doubt. Uh, I think perhaps it is too early to conclude that you will not get justice before the panel because you still have a lot of options. Okay. And uh, much, it's also, uh, they should know that the, the National Assembly have no power to prosecute, they can only make recommendations. Okay. So the, taking all this into consideration, whatever report they come up with, if it's not credible enough, they can still challenge it uh, if um, they are tried under the process. All right, let me just go, go back to uh, Mr. Coyote and just ask, uh, since rebranding seemed to be failing, uh, there are some persons who are suggesting that maybe a disbanding of the NDDC um, is an option. Uh, do you see that uh, happening? Of course, after a thorough investigation and reparation uh, has been uh, done. Well, I agree that there is a need to really reform the NDDC. I think they've derailed from the original mandate they were given when they were created about a decade or so ago. And they've outlived their usefulness in terms of intervention because a lot of things have just been done by individuals to suit themselves. So no matter the result of the forensic audit, or whatever comes out from the legislative audit, as it were, there is an urgent need to look back at the laws forming of the NDDC and then we can figure out with a bit to, make, to bring it forward to the 21st century. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Coyote, for that thought. Uh, just to wrap things up, uh, Mr. Ophelia, uh, your thought on uh, this. I'll come back to you, uh, Mr. Coyote. Uh, your quick thought on the other round of crisis that seems to have begun um, at the National Assembly, and that's the retirement of the clerk to the National Assembly and over 150 uh, senior management staff of parliament. Both are quoting provisions of the law, taking their stance. One is saying 60 years, the other one is saying 65 years. One is saying 35 years of service, the other one is saying 40 years of service. Who is more accurate? Well, I don't think the law is, uh, is uh, vague on this issue because um, it is 35 years into service and then 65 years, whichever comes first. You see that you put in 35 years, that if, you, if you enter there young enough and you put in 35 years, okay, then 
you are due for retirement. Then if you enter there maybe a little bit older and you are now 65 years of age, then that is a retirement age. Even though there was an argument that um, for uh, 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 that um, there should be an increase in the age to 70. Okay, well, that has not been made law. Okay, yeah. so I do not know why they are mixing it um, with that proposal or proposition that was raised some time ago right. that they should amend, you know, the law, the extant law to the effect uh, as regards uh, the age of civil servant, the age of retirement, and the age of work All right, uh, that is expected. Uh, let, let me go back to Mr. Kayade to wrap things up. Um, your final thoughts on the matter. Where do you see events leading us in the coming days? Um, I share basically the fact that another scandal will break up next week. And this one will not be as important to us as it is today anymore. That is my fear. Because every time we come across scandals of this uh, magnitude, we have an attention span of, let's say, a week. Yeah, we move on to another thing. That's why we never get to the bottom of problems that we, we could have caused in the past. That is my fear. Once we can get over that, everything will be fine. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ganyu Kayode, for your time with us on the program. It's appreciated. Thank you very much. And, of course, Mr. Evans Ufeli, legal practitioner, a pleasure always to talk with you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, to take a short break now, and when we return, we alluded to it already. Upward review of age limit has been conversed by the Senate for job seekers. That's our conversation after this break. <laughs>